<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. And in this video here, we're going to be revisiting our good old friend here, the original Xbox, and we're going to be wiping the dust off of a 20-year-old game with a nice fresh patch here that has been played for a while. This is going to be the original Halo 2 on the original Xbox, but this here is going to be how to install and use the Halo 2 HD patch for the original Xbox. Now, for anybody who does not know, Halo 2 HD is a patch that has been made and released by Grim Doomer, which is currently at the time of recording this only supported on the original version of Halo 2, the base 1.0 version, so this does not work on any of the other newer updates, meaning that this would be more meant for offline play, campaign, local multiplayer, that's what it would be for. But right here, for example, this is a 1080p screenshot, for example, which was pulled directly from the frame buffer, because this is able to actually render the game in HD. Now, do keep in mind, you do have to have a modified original Xbox for this. It has to be either hard modded or soft modded. And to make use of the actual HD resolutions, meaning 720p or 1080i or internally 1080p, you would need to have some more modifications done to your system. Mainly, we would be talking about GPU overclocking and RAM upgrades. So if you have hardware-wise a completely stock system, you're only going to be able to make use of the 480p option on here. However, if you have a RAM upgraded system, meaning it has been upgraded to 128 megabytes of RAM, you'll be able to make use of the actual HD resolutions. Keep in mind though, in my opinion, this is still worth checking out, and even if you're going to be playing it at 480p, this actually allows you to play the game at a proper 480p. I won't get fully into it here, however, if you want to look into more details about it, you can check out the great GitHub page, which will be linked down below in the description. It has a really good walkthrough of everything. It goes over more detail on everything here, requirements, compatibility, and much more. However, in short, we will need a few things for our prerequisites. First of all, we will need an original Xbox. This is not intended for the Xbox 360 or an emulator. This will be for an original original Xbox console. It must also be modified, either hard modded or soft modded. Next up, it depends on the mods you have. Like I said, if you haven't touched any of the other hardware, like you have 64 megabytes of RAM, you haven't upgraded the CPU, GPU, they're staying at the stock clocks, then you'll just make use of the 480p resolution. However, to make further use of this patch, at minimum, if you're wanting to get to actual 720p resolution, you will need a 128 megabyte RAM mod on here. However, this console I'm using does not have that, so this will just make use of the 480p upgrades on here, but it is still worth checking out in my opinion. You will also need a copy of the Halo 2 game, and you're also going to need a computer so that we can download the patch, apply it, and we're going to need to transfer some files to and from the computer and the Xbox, meaning that you're also going to need your console on your network. So with all that being said, let's get started on here. If you have an original Xbox, you are going Going to need a copy of the game. This is going to require a clean copy of Halo 2, meaning there's no updates, there's no maps, none of that added on here. So for that, I would at least recommend backing up your saves if you care about them, backing up your content, and deleting them if you're going to be using this on here. Because again, this will also not be utilized on Insignia, for example. This is just going to be for really offline play. So for that, what you can do is go over to where your game saves are at. I'm going to go to my save manager. I'll look for Halo 2. And if you have anything like this here, you are going to need to at least I would recommend go in, back up your saves, back up the data from here and clear it out. Since I personally don't care about the save data on here, I'm just going to go in, find any of my Halo 2 info, say yes, and just delete this here. And I already had one for Halo 2 HD, but I'm going to erase that as well. With that cleared out, what I now need to do is copy over Halo 2 to the internal hard drive. You cannot run this patch from the disk, you will have to install the game to the internal hard drive in order to patch the game itself. So for that, you must copy the files over. If you have a modified Xbox, you're probably familiar with DVD to Xbox. So I already have my disk inserted, I'm going to go over to Applications, and fire up DVD to Xbox to rip over my Halo 2. Now that this has come up, you might need to change some settings just to make sure we have a clean rip on here. This would be recommended to go into Settings, go to General, 
and go down to enable ACL processing and enable ACL RM, MV, and EP, and make sure both of those have been set to no. Once they've been set to no, you can go back, go back yet again, and hit copy DVD CD to hard disk. Now select where you want to transfer the game over to. As you can see, I have an F partition right here that has plenty of storage. So you will need to have enough storage about four and a half gigabytes for Halo 2. Once you've selected where you want to save it, go ahead and tap the A button on that and give it a few moments. It should bring up this path right here for Halo 2. Once that's good, press start yet again to proceed and it should start ripping the game over. This will take a few minutes, so just let it sit there and do its thing. It is worth noting as well that Grim Doomer does have a SHA-1 hash for the exact version 1.0 XBE file that you'll be looking for, but for what it's worth on here, I am using the Halo 2 NTSC U disk for this, which seems to produce this just fine. So that one will work without any issues. Now, while Halo 2 is ripping from the disk, if you're getting a clean copy of it that way, we can go ahead and get the downloads needed, all of which will be linked down below in the description. The first thing we're going to need is the actual Halo 2 HD patch. You can click on the releases tab over on the GitHub page, and once this comes up here, download the latest version right here, which at the time of recording this is Halo 2 HD version 1.0. Again, while I'm recording this, this is for the 1.0 base version of Halo 2. Just download the zip, save it somewhere you can easily find it. If you need something to extract out a zip file, you can always use something such as 7-zip. It's easy to use, free, and all you need to do is download this and install it for your respective OS. Next up to transfer some files to and from the computer and the Xbox, you will need some type of FTP software. I personally use WinSCP, but if you want to use your own FTP software or suite, you're more than welcome to do so. You're also going to need XDelta UI or another reliable XDelta patcher in order to patch the file with the XDelta patch we're going to have. This will be linked over on romhacking.net and you can just download this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. When you have the Halo 2 HD patch downloaded, you just need to right click and extract it out right here. It should give you a new folder called Halo 2 HD version 1.0 and inside of here, you just have two files, the Halo 2 HD.xdelta as well as a HD config any file. These two are going to be required in order to patch our file. Now this HD config any file is going to be important and it'd be worth checking this out right here. You can double click this and there's going to be a lot of really nice comments you can check out here that explain everything. So for example, well, if you want to enable 1080i support, you can change this from false to true. By default, enable 720p support is set to true. However, do keep in mind, as I said, these HD resolutions will not work unless you have a RAM modified system. If you have the default 64 megabytes of RAM, you're not going to be able to use HD resolution, so even if you set the both of these to true, it's not going to matter. If you want to disable anamorphic scaling, that is set to true. Disabling atmospheric fog by default is set to false. You can change the field of view right here, change your split screen favor, disable the HUD, enable or disable debug mode, change the hard drive speed if you want to. This would be more for some other upgraded systems if you have changed out the IDE ribbon cable and upgraded the hard drive or changed over to a solid state drive. Although in my opinion here, this is better to be set by a BIOS itself as opposed to the INI file here. But if you are changing the hard drive speed, you're able to set the values right here and it does cover what UDMA settings you might want for which configurations. There's some information about overclocking here and several warnings about it as well and finally if you want to enable a fan speed override and setting the fan speed you can do all of that from this INI file. However the nice thing is over on the main github repository you can come over and you can check out the configuration file wiki over here and when you check this out here this just has all of the flags that are set within that any file except it's a bit cleaner to read through on this page and there might be some examples as well too. So for example with the anamorphic scaling this is how Halo 2 looks at 480p by default, 
And then if you're running it with this patch in 480p, this is how it would look right here with that anamorphic scaling disabled. So I'd recommend giving these here a read and really customizing it to your heart's content. But really just take some warnings here and take some of this seriously in regards to like GPU overclocks and such. He does a really great job covering this here. For me personally on my own configuration, since I've just upgraded the hard drive, I have a custom BIOS but I have not upgraded the RAM on here. I did not touch this any file and it worked just fine for me. I didn't do any overclocking, I didn't do any of the other stuff. So if you just have a stock console and you're unsure of what to do, just use this default config file and you should be okay. So here we go, back over at the original Xbox, this has been copied over, so we can go ahead and press start and we can exit to dashboard. Once you're back over at the dashboard, you will need to make sure that your console is connected to your network if it is not already connected that you have a valid local IP address and keep that in mind because we're now going to move back over to our computer while the Xbox is running right here so we can transfer some files to and from the system. If you're using something such as Unleash X, you'll notice in the bottom right of my screen, I have my local IP address there. Yours will probably differ, but go ahead and keep that in mind because we are going to need it for our FTP program. If you're using WinSCP, you can go to New Tab and click on New Remote Tab. Once this comes up here, we can create a new site. You're going to change the protocol to FTP, no encryption. The host name will be the IP address of your console. Port number will be 21. And then the username will be Xbox, all lowercase, all one word. And the password is going to be the exact same. Once that's done, you can click on login and give it a few moments to connect. Once it connects, you should see your drive shares right here on your system over on the right. And on the left here is going to be wherever you're locally navigated to on your computer. As you can see, I've navigated over to my Halo 2 HD version 1.0 directory. So you'll need to come over to wherever you've ripped over your game, which I know mine on the Xbox is in the F drive. It's going to be in the games folder, and it's going to be in the Halo 2 folder. And this is the only file we're going to need. We're going to need this default.xbe, which you can right click and download and hit OK. Now, I would also recommend changing this here. Over on the Xbox itself, you can right click this and rename. And you can call this something such as default underscore original.xbe. That way, we do not delete it. And in case you ever want to revert this back, you can just rename this to default.xbe. But while this is running, let's go ahead and minimize WinSCP, and we're going to modify our default XBE over on our computer. Now, our local Halo 2 HD folder on our computer should look like this. We should have the clean default.xbe extracted from the Halo 2 disk, as well as the X Delta and our HD config file configured to our liking. Now we need to modify this using X Delta UI. Go ahead and grab the X Delta UI zip, use something such as 7-zip and extract it into its own folder. When you open up the xdelta UI folder, find the xdelta UI executable and double click it to launch it. We can close out of here and thankfully this is a pretty easy process. You just need to come to the apply patch tab which is open up by default. Now click on open for the patch itself. Navigate over to the Halo 2 HD folder and grab the Halo 2 HD xdelta patch. Now you need to grab the source file. Click on open and grab the default.xbe. Click open here. And finally for the output file, click on here. And you can save this to whatever you want it to be. For this, I'm going to call this halo 2 v onexbe Just something like that so I know. Now click on save and click on patch. It will save file patch successfully. Click on okay, click on close. And as you can see, you still have your original default.xbe, but you now have a new xbe file, which is the one with our patch. And this one we need to transfer back over to the console. So now with the patching process complete, open up WinSCP yet again, and we're going to get the transfers over. We need to transfer over two files. First of all, we need to transfer over our patched executable. For this, you can just right click it, click on upload, and click on OK. And there we go. Next, we need the hdconfig any file. This is required. Right click, upload, hit OK. Finally, in order to get this to recognize on our dashboard, here on the right hand side, which should be your Xbox, you'll need to right click on the Halo 2 HD patched file, click on rename, and rename this to default.xbe. Hit enter. If it asks to overwrite, you can say yes there, 
But as you can see, there we go. We have that done. So at this point, this is how our Halo 2 should look like. We should have the default XBE, which is the patched version, the default XBE original, which is the clean version, and over on your computer, you should have the same things in case you ever need to restore them. You should also have the HD config loaded up next to the default.xbe in the same directory. With all that done, we can now close out of WinSCP and go back over to the console. To get this to show up on your console, go ahead and reload your dashboard or just restart the console. For me, I'm just going to personally reboot the console. And now we're at the final step, which is, well, actually playing the game. And this is where the magic happens. You can go over to your games directory, make sure this loads in, and scroll over to Halo, and you should notice something called Halo 2 HD. Go ahead and fire that up, and guess what? Well, you've been able to successfully patch your Halo 2 game over to the Halo 2 HD patch. You will probably notice a few changes here. First of all, the original BIC videos here at the beginning are still going to display in 480p. That's not going to be able to be changed, unfortunately. But you can come over here. You might have to create a new profile if you do not have anything here. But as you can see, don't sign in. We are able to actually play this now and make use of the Halo 2 HD patch. So there you go, you can now go around, have some fun, mess around in some multiplayer maps, maybe get some cool screenshots, get a little bit more usage out of Halo 2, play around with it a bit, mess around with some things such as debug mode if you want to, since that is available in that any file. And on top of that, if you are one of those people who has 128 megabytes of RAM on your system, well, you'll be in for a treat because you'll actually be able to run the Halo 2 HD patch in HD. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.